Okay, so this is an example of an R3 grid or a third dimension, okay, which is essentially what we work with in real life. Uh, we're going to use this as our x axis. This will be our y axis, and this will be our z axis. Okay, and what that means is that we have an extra axis to work off of, so our lines are no longer flat like a Super Mario game from Nintendo. It's more like N64, where you can move everywhere in case you play video games. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to talk about a point here. We, when you talk about the origin, we always refer to it as our O. It starts at 0 and 0. And this is an origin where all three axes cross each other. Now, these axes right now in the grid I have are all positive, as you guys can see. But they do have negative implications. They can continue to go backwards. Can continue to go down. And it can continue to go on a 45 like that. Okay, so we're going to keep drawing it out there. So this is more what we'd be looking for. We have positive and negative. What we started with, what were the positive directions of this? So up is positive, to the right is positive, and at us on the x-axis is our positive. This is the negative direction on the x-axis. This is the negative direction on the y-axis. And this is the negative direction on the z-axis. Okay? I know it can be a little hard to see. We'll do something different in a moment. But we're going to talk about points along here. Uh, we have points along here. For instance, let's say I'm looking for something and they've given me coordinates. Our coordinates are written like this. X, Y, and then Z. That's how they refer to the axis. So, our first coordinate, let's say it's 2, 4, 6. Nice and easy. This is going to refer to our x-axis, okay? And we'll do that one in red. So, I would start at my origin, and I hope you guys can see this. We go over two points. I'm going to draw them as lines, because sometimes it's easier to see things as parallelograms or squares. So we start our origin, and we move over two on our x. Okay, so we've gone across two on the x. We then go four on the y-axis. Well, the y-axis looks like it's moving to our right. So from there, we go over one, two, three, four. I'm now at this point here. Or in other words, that would be four across on our y-axis there. Let me move that down a bit. Okay. And finally, our z. Our z is going up six units. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going up like that. Or in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to create a box or a square. So this makes a little more sense. It'll be easier for us to recognize everything this way. We'll change the colors. So we can see almost like we do have parallel vectors when we're going through something like this. And what I'm going to do is copy them. So, we go to create our box here. This guy come here. This guy comes here. Did I not make that into the corner? There we go. Sorry, last one. This piece goes up here. Now I realize you guys don't all have this ability. You're going to do your best to try to draw it in third dimension. Okay. So here's our box. Our coordinate, I'm going to try to outline, is right here. Okay. That's the point we're talking about. So it's almost like it's coming out at us or jetting at us. So we're going to do a little line here for it. We start at the origin and we would come up to here. And that would be the point two, four, six. Okay. Why is it that the four, the 